Welcome back tubers, so I thought it was about time we do a bit of an update video on the 18650s and the power wall. Let's just jump straight into it and we'll start off with this room here. So my flatmate moved out and I've taken over the room as you can kind of see. So we have lots of 18650s. This is two sets of 10 kilowatt hours, 20 kilowatt hours all in total. Well it's actually just a bit over but we're around that anyway. 20 kilowatt hours. So these are 80P14S. So this set here is 14S and then that set there is 14S. The, the 80P, so there's 80 cells in parallel all to go into one a group. So I've got, this is without the, the top on, I've got a whole bunch of um, the plastic tops over here. So I ordered these just um, a month or so ago. So I've just put these together. Now I've ordered, also ordered these in 4 by so that they are easy to put together. I used to order them singular and then that took a very long time to kind of all put together but just ordering like this is just so simple. All you need is four per ADP and then obviously another four for the top. So I've got all these set to go. So they're all stacked up there. The other thing to um, for my fusing to fuse all these what I've got is I'm gone down the exact approach that um, Average Joe suggested so this is using his link on uh, his channel for eBay So these are the um, one amp glass fuses So I would highly recommend using these rather than using fuse wire There's about 3,000 here, um, which is way more than I need but uh, I thought I'd get more than I needed um, just because it's simpler so Overall, these work out uh, really well for cost wise, but the other thing is, is that you can guarantee that they're one amp. Where if you used fuse wire, um, you half the time you're not sure, and also the length of the wire and, and just the type of wire, you can't guarantee it's going to blow at one amp or two amps. Sometimes it ends up being five or six, as Average Joe showed on some of his older videos. So, yeah, highly recommend just buying these and just they're easy to spot weld and they're also easy to solder. So enough about that, that's what I'll be using on these packs here and definitely going forwards that I'll be using those fuses. So coming along to here, what I've done is I've set them up as I said, um, two sets of 10 kilowatt hours each. I thought I would uh, build them all at once um, rather than trying to do one set of 10 kilowatt hours than the other. Um, that way I can kind of spot well and just keep going for 28 times obviously. Um, the other thing is looking at these, um, just a bit closer. These are my best packs I've done yet. So these have an average of 25 milliamp hours per cell. Now what I did was I ended up having all those boxes I'll show you in a second, but uh, of cells. And what I did was I went down and I put all the cells at, at 2000 milliamp hours, and then next set of cells at 2400 milliamp hours, and then kind of kept going. So there's what, 2400 or 2000 and something cells here, uh, however many it calculates to, but there's a lot of cells. So I didn't bother using the spreadsheet. Uh, those spreadsheets were using that spreadsheet kind of method of writing down all the cells and then calculating which cell should go in which pack. That works sometimes, but it works easier on smaller packs. If you try and do it with over 2000 cells, it's a big pain. So I decided to go down this method of trying to um, and put the cells so that they're kind of equal as possible. So anyway, um, so all the ones at the bottom of the packs are the lower cells, so the 21s and 22s, That this is a 23, but they're all quite low at the bottom part, and the mid parts of the packs all the way through, they're much higher, so these are, if I can actually get one out, 2600 milliamp hours in this one, um, and they're pretty much obviously mixed between 25 to 26 to 27s. And then what I did at the end of each of the packs for the last 20 cells, so all these ones here, as the plane goes over, uh, are all really, really high ones. So this one here is a 3000 milliamp hour cell, pretty much 8000, uh, so 28000 to 3200 is what I've used for all of these down here. So that's obviously a few hundred cells of really high capacity ones. That's, an, that's obviously a 3000 there. And I've got some really high ones somewhere along here. I just can't remember where they are. That's a 28. Um, I can't remember where I put them. But I found some really good cells that I had. Um, some of them were um, 3,200s, 3,300s. I, I think I had a 3,400, which might be the highest cell that I've, I've, um, I've kind of found. But yeah, most of them are like this one here is a uh, 3,180. So they're normally around that. 
and I've done that for all of the, the last ones here or for the last kind of yeah, 20 cells. So overall the, the average capacity of these is most likely to be honest it's probably going to be around 26 um, milliamp hours um, per cell on average so it's actually going to be really good. So it's going to be interesting to see how these go. Obviously this has taken a while to kind of test and put together. All these cells have been rested for probably coming up to about three months now. That's how long I've, they've been in boxes for. And it was just about time that I pulled them out of boxes because I was running out of boxes to put things in. So guys, this is how this is looking. What I'll do is I'll go across to my office and I'll show you how the office is looking. So this is my messy office and it's only messy because of all these 18650 cells. So what I've got up here is I've got all my discharges, they're still kind of um, working along. One cell's just finished, so I'll write that one down in a second. What I do is I like to have a pile of cells that are fully charged, ready to go straight into the discharges. So there's a good production run pretty much, is have this big pile here, that way I can keep the whole thing flowing into here. I process about 40 to 50 cells per day on the discharges, so it takes a lot to obviously keep making sure that that's full of cells ready to go but to, to process as many as possible it takes time. If I flip down here what you'll see is a whole well boxes of, of cells. What I've got on this side is I've got these are the um, 1800 to just under 2000 milliamp hours and there's about 500 of them there. They're spooling out the side here and they're falling out the back so I need to do something with these. 1200 to, eight, to just under 1800 milliamp hours. This box here is um, it's got quite a few in there's probably about 300 in there but there's 300 plus the ones at the back there and that box is about 250 probably and this one here um, these are a mixture of kind of the whole lot so that box is also spilling over the back um, so those are kind of the lower end ones this is the ones that I'll use um, before doing anything else um, with building that other pack that I've got in the garage out to expand that out to um, 10 kilowatt hours but we'll come back to that this one here is my my good cells so they're really they're starting to um, I'll get those so that I can build those into my third or fourth actual 10 kilowatt hour pack so there's quite a few in here um, there's probably about 300 in there right now obviously I need more uh, this one here is the lower capacity one, so 2000 and something milliamp hours, so normally 22s on average in this box, 23s to 28s in this box, and then this box here is 3000s, um, 2800 to 3000 and something, so you'll see lots of 3000s in there, um, some 28s, um, but quite a, a good selection of cells. So this is what I'm putting at the very back of the packs to, um, I want to use as many of these as possible because these are obviously the best of the best that I've got. So that's kind of filling up, but hopefully by the time this fills up, I'll have way more than I need for to make the next 10 kilowatt hours um, and the good cell. Um. So yeah, that's how that's looking. This room's turning into a mess because of, of batteries and boxes and things everywhere. I can't really do anything else, none of my other projects, just 18650s. So anyway, I'll show you the garage and where we're up to with that. I've moved some things around, so I'll quickly show you that. Excuse the noise, um, I've got some fans going on in the background and it's nice and summery in Auckland. So what we've got here is these are my chargers. I've ended up, um, some of them have failed because I've accidentally put the cell in the wrong way. So I need to fix these up. Pretty much what I need to do is get another board, start again and follow it up and probably get about 30 or 40 of these chargers. I've got them all the chips ready to go. They are um, the TP4056 I think they are. I've got a lot of them ready to go, probably another 20 or 30 of them. I just need to spend the time and build it out and make it nice and neat. I haven't done that yet. These are still functioning um, and they're pretty, these are all charged so they're ready to go. This is my box of charged cells that I, once they get charged, I take this box and I take it into the house and throw it into that pile of cells to discharge. So, so far that, that's working well. We come over to this mess and I'm sorry about the noise. We've got I've got my spot welder up on the bench here. Uh, I haven't used it much since the video. I've just kind of placed it there. I just had a two second play with it, but I need to have a play with it and get used to it and then um, start doing those packs. Um, if you guys have got any suggestions and settings and bits and pieces, I know that Daniel, I think from DIY Tech and Repairs, um, has got some good settings to use to try and um, get the spot welds perfect every time. So yeah, um, please comment and, and put your feedback in for that. 
Uh, also, I've got a whole bunch of these LiPo cells that I'm running through the IMAX B6, so I'm testing those. This one's pretty much ready to charge, uh, finish charging. And then what I want to do is charge them all up, test the voltage and make sure it's stable. And then I'll do as a discharge test on all these. Unfortunately, this is going to be a long process. The other thing I've got is, I'll come back to these ones in a second, but these ones here, these are all um, 2500 milliamp hours all the way up to just under 1800 milliamp hours, apart from this row here. But this one here, th this is obviously, I haven't counted right now because I can't remember what, how many there is, but there's obviously a few. Some of you guys can pause the video and figure it out, but um, this is kind of, I've got a large selection of those. I'll take rid of these, get rid of these power banks here, you'll kind of see. And they're all stacked up there. I'm not too sure what to do with them yet. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's worth my time soldering them, fuse, or spot welding them, fu um, and fusing them, and putting them into packs. Uh, I just don't know, I haven't really thought about it too much, and I'm not too sure what to do about these, or how to use them. And as you can see in those boxes earlier in the video, I've got twice as many of these as I, um, as I need. Um, the other thing I've got is that I need some help with deciding what to do with is all these lipo cells. So I've got quite a few. Uh, there's, uh, there's these ones here. I've got some big packs like this one here. I've got um, some smaller packs. Uh, I've got some really big packs somewhere, some 20,000 milliamp hour ones. Um, and yeah, there's, I've got quite a selection of these. I've actually got one that's pretty cool. I'll just quickly show you. This one here is it's stuck on the back of a solar panel. So that's definitely going to be usable for something. Um, mainly because it comes with a solar panel, so why not? Now, I've, I haven't taped all the wires yet because what I'll do is I'll test them. And then once I've tested them and figured out how, what, how many, what their capacity is, then I'll tape up the wires and before I use them in projects so that they're not so dangerous. But I've put all the negatives one side and all the positives the other, as you can see on this side. Um, so the other thing I've got is I've got a heck of a lot of those. Um, as you can see down here, a lot of those power banks that haven't been opened yet. A lot more up here. These are the jump starter car ones where you plug in your, your uh, plug in some leads and then take it to a jump starter and jump start it. So I've got lots of those and I've kind of got a large collection of them. This one here has actually got a solar panel on it. And a lot of these are 10,000 to 20,000 milliamp hours. This one here is 20,000 milliamp hours. So what I've did was I tested a whole bunch of these. And I've, these ones here I think I've tested. There we go, that's one that's tested. So 6,800 milliamp hours. Now, that's mainly, this is a 10,000 milliamp hour pack, but you get 6,000 or 7,000 out of it. It's about a six months to a year, about a year old this pack, I'm pretty sure. And there's also the um, deduction from DC to DC when you try and get the, um, or when, you, when you've got something connected to it. So the question I suppose is how did I test these? Well, what I did was I, if I flick across uh, over here, I used this to do my testing. This one here, 6,660 milliamp hours. So that was one of the power banks I tested. I connected that up to a USB plug and then I used this to plug into the power pack and then set this up so that when the voltage drops to, I think mean it's about three volts, but it will kick off as soon as the power pack automatically turns off and it will give us how many milliamp hours it's got. Testing this always at one amp. So that kind of gives me a good idea. These cells here are the ones I'm yet to um, charge. So I've got this big box, there's probably about a couple of hundred in there, and they're yet to go on the chargers. Uh, and I've got more stuff to pull apart and bits and pieces. So I've kind of got a lot going on. That's why things have been a little bit slow on the, the video production in the last little while, as you can possibly tell. Um, and yeah, I've just been a little bit busy. So thanks guys again for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Obviously that next 10, 20 kilowatt hours is gonna be, um, I'm gonna start spot welding it. So there's gonna be some videos on that and me figuring out the best way to try and spot weld. Um, and yeah, pretty much going from there. So some interesting videos guys coming up and I'll see you on the next one. Obviously again, comment if you've got some comments and some, um, some ideas that I can maybe use these cells for. Um, these 
lipo cells because I'm not really too sure what to do with them and obviously I've got quite a large capacity. The biggest problem with these of course is that they're different sizes so they're not all the same pack size so it's going to be a bit annoying. Um, so but anyway yeah thanks again for watching guys I'll see you on the next video.